Hey folks, I wanted to share a new CNC project with you. It's one that I'm really pleased with. And this project comes out of some of my work with the laser and LED lighting. You've probably seen some examples online of what's called edge lighting. In this case, a piece of clear acrylic is etched and then LED lit along the edge. The light passes through the clear parts of the acrylic and reflects off the etched parts, revealing the design. It makes for a cool effect with the design appearing to be suspended in the clear acrylic. I've used this to good effect in a couple of projects. I always think it looks really good. For a traditional edge lit project on CNC, you'd probably use something like Carbide's MC Etcher to trace very fine lines in the acrylic. But I wanted to experiment with something a little different so I decided to go with a larger format and V-carving. I started with a two-foot square piece of quarter-inch acrylic from E Street Plastics. The acrylic arrives with masking on both sides, which you want to leave on until you're ready to work on that face. Acrylic scratches really easy and any scratches will show up in the edge lighting. One of the keys to edge lit acrylic is the edge itself. It needs to be as clear as possible to get the full effect of the light. This effect can be achieved by using a blowtorch and doing what's called flame polish. But that always made me feel like I'm holding a live grenade in my hand. I opted for a less flammable method and sanded the edges with 240, 320, and 400 grit sandpaper then used an EE Ultra Shine to polish the edge for a final pass. You could fiddle around with a variety of grits and even some wet dry sandpaper, but the general idea is you just go from a rough grit to progressively finer grits. It's quick and it works well. Again, I will remind you, you want to keep the masking on the acrylic, especially for this part. Given the size and weight of this piece, it was probably going to be hanging on a wall rather than freestanding. And a clear acrylic piece would just show the wall behind it, which seemed kind of boring. So I opted to go high contrast and paint one side of the acrylic with a matte black paint. I went with Stuart Simple's Black 2.0, which is an extremely non-reflective black paint. You could also use spray paint or even colors if you want a different effect. So at this point, I peel off the masking on one side only and apply my paint. After a few layers and 24 hours of drying time, I'm ready to V-carve the painted side. Once the carve is finished, you'll notice that the surface on this side can look a little chunky and lacking in detail. However, the coolness comes when you flip the piece over and remove the masking from the other side. This is when the details really pop. Cool, right? Now we need to get this framed and lit. When I'm making something like a frame in Carbide Create, I find it's helpful for me to have a physical representation of what I'm doing so that I can kind of reference it in here. And I'll show you what I mean. Um, to begin with our file setup, is 30 by 30 three quarters of an inch I'm gonna zero things from the bottom so zeroing from the wasteboard itself lower left and hardwood that's pretty standard so like I said I want a, a physical representation of what I'm working with and I know my piece is 24 by 24 Right? So now this is the physical object that I'm working with and I can kind of base all the rest of my measurements off of that. But I also don't want to cut this so I'm going to come in here in the edit menu, show layers, I'm going to add a new layer. I'm going to try and spell. Okay. And then I'm going to just move the selection to the layer. So now I've got a red line. This tells me, okay, this is my 
my piece that I'm working with and now I can make the bits that I want around it and I'm gonna center this in the canvas okay so the first thing I know is that I want my frame to be about two inches wide on the sides right so I'm gonna make myself another square and this one is going to be 20. There's a 20. All right, and then we're going to center it on that. Okay, so this will be the outer circumference of my frame. And this is going to need to sit down in a recessed piece in that frame. And I think I want a lip of about a half inch in there. So if this is 24 by 24, I'm going to want to make this 23. And we're going to center it on this. Okay. So that's going to be my inner lip, right? This will be what this piece rests on. The other measurement I'm going to need is we're going to carve a channel, right, around this edge on all of our pieces. So I need to allow for this piece here, but I also need to allow for my LEDs. So I need my piece for the other part of the channel to be about an eighth of an inch bigger than what's here. So that's gonna give me a half inch total. So we're going to go 24 and a half. And again, we'll center it on that guy. Cool. Okay, so that's the channel the, between these two that we're going to pocket so that the acrylic and the LEDs can sit down in there. Now that I have this, I can actually draw the pieces of my frame based on that. I'm going to go up here first. I'm going to turn off snap to grid because I really want to snap to the nodes in this case. I'm going to grab this guy. I'm going to go node 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 and node okay so since we've got a square this is going to be our piece right this is all we really need except for we need our channel now from here I can go oh, I keep forgetting this doesn't work like that all right so got that and I'm going to take this node and snap it to that guy and then I'm going to scale now one thing I kind of want our channel to overshoot a little bit because we're going to be making this and it, with a quarter inch bit and if we come down here and just round off at the edge we're going to end up with a little extra material there so I'm going to make this go a little bit further and if I select this and this, these are really going to be our pieces for our entire frame. We'll have this cut out and then we'll have a pocket pass on this longer piece here that'll cut the channel for our frame. Now, the one thing I need to do now is make the connector that we were talking about earlier. And I need to show you how to make that. So to start with, I'm going to create a rectangle. So our rectangle is going to be 0.5 by 0.5. All right, I'm going to zoom in on that so that we're just looking at that. And then I'm going to set this to just slightly bigger than what our bit size is going to be, right? Because I want that to overlap the square just slightly. And actually, it needs to overlap on both sides. 
so like that. All right, I'm gonna make sure these are lined up. Cool. And then I'm gonna do a subtraction, but I need to select my square and then my circle because we want to cut the circle out of the square. Okay, now we can see what it's gonna do. It's gonna nip off these little pieces in red, which is exactly what we want. I tell it okay. And now we've got the pieces that we like. So I'm gonna go ahead and make another square. 0.5. Actually, I'm gonna make this 0.52. Slightly larger. Whoops, too many dots here, Mozart. I'll get this right one day. Okay, so now I've got this little square. And I'm going to take these guys and put them on square, right? So, this one, node to node. Grab the node, node to node. Alright, just like that. Let me just do weld, which will bring all of these together. Okay, cool. Now I've got this part of my shape. Now the next thing I want to do is create the little rounded part of my puzzle piece. And I'm going to make that 0.4. And then I'm going to take it and I'm going to bring it down into the middle of this. I want to zoom in a little bit and make sure that I'm getting there. Bring this over. All right. So what I want is for it to just touch these edges. Just touch on both edges. Close enough. Okay, so that's got what we need. Now, if I just union these two pieces here, I'm going to have these little pointy bits sticking out. And I don't really want that. That's going to be something I'd have to trim off later. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to come over to our node editor. Now you notice we've got a whole bunch of little nodes over here. Happy little nodes. So what I want to do is I want to select all the ones right up into the point where it's coming into contact with that circle. And I'm going to delete those, which means hitting the D key. All right. Hit Control and drag this over. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. So grab all the way down to about right there. And hit the Delete key again. Well, that's one too many. try that all right yeah that looks straight okay so now if I zoom out you can see I've got a much smoother transition between these two pieces so now I can take them grab this grab this tell them union it's gonna do away with all this mess in the middle okay all right and now I've got my shape and I can see if I make myself a little quarter inch piece here to represent my bit, that that quarter inch bit should be able to fit right nicely in there. And I know I'm going to get a nice smooth pass around the outer, and I should still get a smooth pass around the inner. And it's just enough. This is why I made that square slightly larger, so that the bit can pass in and go around the inside to create our negative pocket, our negative piece for the uh, puzzle piece. So now that I've got that, I can get rid of the circle. All right, zoom out. Now I'm going to grab this guy, move him up, and I'm going to rotate him 45 degrees. Whoop, negative 45 degrees. All right, be that way. That is not what I want you to do. All right. 
So now I've got it here and I just want to center it up on this. do that I'm gonna to want to zoom in put those lines right on top of each other and I think that's gonna be good it's gonna avoid my channel here so it'll be, still be in the thickest part of the material I think that'll give us some good strength so I'm gonna go ahead and well, those union those together, tell it OK. And now I've got a piece like this on one end. Now, I need to make a negative version of this on this end. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to copy this, paste it. Then I'm going to turn this guy 90 degrees. then oh, yeah. mm. that is one of the more aggravating things I'm afraid All right. now I'm going to grab it so that I can get my node and I can lock that node to that node and now all I need to do is select this first one then select this one so it's got the minus signs and I'm going to tell it subtraction and that's what we should end up with tell it OK And we've got our pieces. Cool. So now, if I zoom back out, for our entire frame, we're just going to create a bunch of pieces like this. And they should all fit together. Now, I'm going to go ahead and group those, just so I don't get them out of alignment. And I'm going to take them, and I'm going to put them right there. Just, just to kind of make sure. I want to make sure that I'm doing this correctly. Copy V. Ninety. Oh, I hate that. Okay. Copy my node there. Boom. So those fit exactly. So looking at it now, I can see that all of my pieces should just snap together the way I see them right now. So all I've got to do is take the individual bits right here and put those in the file the way I need them to be. So I'm going to take the rest of this stuff and move it to a completely different layer just to kind of get it out of my way. And then I'm just going to turn this layer off for right now so I don't have to see it. Hide. There it is. Okay. So now I've got all my pieces. And I'm going to just lay them all flat and one above the other. So now these are the files that I need to cut in order to make our frame. And we should be able to just save our tool paths and head over to the machine. Let's ungroup these for right now because I'm going to need to do some separate operations with them. All right, over in our tool paths, we're going to do this. Okay, and we're going to pocket those. I'm using quarter inch acrylic and I'm going to have a piece of cardboard behind it which is another 175 so that is going to be total wow that is just not right it's going to be about 325 total call that lip 
Okay, and that's going to cut that piece out. And I'm probably going to need to spread these guys apart because the quarter inch bit's not going to fit in between them. So let's go back to design for a second. And next we're going to go ahead and cut around the outside of these. So if I select each one of those. Like contour, current selection, stock bottom, same quarter inch end mill, outside right. Call this cut out. Okay, and now I should be able to just look at my simulation. And see that I'm getting what I expect, right? And my bit seems to be getting in where it's supposed to. And I have my little channel here that's going to hold the rest of my frame. So that should be everything we need and we can go over to the machine and cut this out. Oh, and I almost forgot, one of these guys needs to have a place for our electronics. So I'm going to choose this one at the bottom and we're going to make a couple of more small channels here. I'm going to make this one about three inches by 0.3. And this is just going to be a place for wires to go. I'm going to put it right about here. Okay. And then we need a place for our circuit board to go. Our circuit board needs to be about 0.75 tall. And I need to 0.75 and about three inches long and we're gonna make that one a little bit deeper but what we're gonna do is we're gonna move this down about here that should give us plenty of room to fish our wires in the way we need to that should work just fine so our wiring will go here, and this is where the LEDs will come down. I'm also going to wind up drilling a hole up through here to go ahead and get the connector for the power wires. But that'll go right there, and this will give us a space to put our, our circuit board. After the frame is finished and assembled, I need to add the electronics. You could go with a basic single color if you like, but why limit yourself? I went with a strip of full color LEDs and a controller board called the Electromage Pixel Blaze. This board is easy to set up and comes with Wi-Fi and a number of preset color patterns for the LEDs. There's also a web-based editor to add or edit the patterns controls to automatically turn the lights on and off, and much more. It's a pretty easy thing to set up with some basic soldering skill. The strip of LED lights gets stuck to the inside of the frame, facing in where the acrylic is going to sit. One thing to note on the LEDs, the control signal for the LEDs only travels in one direction, so check for the little arrow on the strip to know which end you need to be hooking up. 
We'll also need a power connector, which requires us to drill a hole in the bottom of our frame. We will hold the connector in place with some hot glue. Once that's finished, we'll solder things together, and it's time to test. Then comes the cursing, the resoldering, the feelings of deep inadequacy, the vile recriminations, and finally, success. We can then add the acrylic to our frame. I overshot the measurements for the recess on this frame, so I tacked things down with the hot glue gun to keep them in place. Lastly, I cut and mounted a large piece of cardboard behind the acrylic. This will keep me from scratching the black paint, and it doesn't add any significant weight to the final piece. Time to hang it up, turn off the lights, and play a bit of music. This has to be one of my favorite things that I have made recently, and it's given me quite a few ideas for future work. It'd be really interesting to play with different background colors, and see what the contrast looks like, or even painting a design that would enhance the carved areas. Hopefully it gives you a few ideas and inspirations too. Until next time. Danger.